Hi, Steve from Custom Table Tennis and probably probably we're asked this virtually every week by someone um, so I thought we'd just do this one. Um, when is it time to change your table tennis rubbers? What, what, what are the signs? Um, well let's just look at the worst case scenario and this is probably the worst I've ever seen. Um, I mean this is a jewelerism. You can see it's just been played and played and played and there's absolutely, it's actually gone to anti-spin. There is absolutely nothing there. And um, I mean, he did actually say to me, well, these rubbers don't last very long. But it, when, we, when we had a look at the, when he got this, um, he did it over eight years. So the, it's going from one extreme to the other. Manufacturers recommend you change your rubbers every 60 hours. Well, yeah, they would, wouldn't they? But, I mean, that is the recommendation. And probably at a high international level, they'll get changed more frequently than that. But this is about as... I mean, I've just got it here as an example. I can't give it away to coaching unless you want to learn how to play with anti-spin. There's absolutely nothing there on it. Um, it's just been played to death. I can't even believe that somebody continue to play with that because you cannot it's physically impossible really to get any spin on the ball in fact it's better than better than your anti-spins that are made like that to be quite honest so that that's your worst case scenario looking at a couple of others then um here's a rosanta power grip um i think he, he probably changed it prematurely because he wasn't getting on with it uh, there's still plenty of grip there and one of the signs to look out for and I'll come on to some others in a moment is if you just hold them to the light and you can see the pimples starting to come through um, probably more visible on Japanese rubbers than German made rubbers and then the other thing is if you're not as getting much getting as much on your serves uh, if you're not spinning the ball people generally not always because I've got players who religiously change them every three to four months keep them a season and then some do two three four five seasons and uh, well I'll come on to those in a moment here's another good example there's a little bit of a scuff mark up there but you can see round here it's still in good condition it's one of the poly ball dynamic friction axiom rubbers which tend to be durable anyway and worst case scenario then and, um, is if you can see from this rubber I don't know if we can pick it out but when the pimples are starting to come through there's just going to be no grip there whatsoever I mean this is your worst case on a on a tenergy I mean he came with that on a bat and I says, well, did players let you play with that? He went, oh, yeah, they didn't bother. I mean, look at that. It's looks like it's been in a mouse trap that they've run out of cheese or something. Um, so that's, that's, and there's nothing, there's nothing there. And I think, generally speaking, there's another one there, look. You see where his fingers have been coming up here and the pimples are coming through. I think I can only surmise that because tenergy is so expensive people just keep them on the bat because they 60 pound of go in the uk but look at that you're not going to be able to play the other thing is anyway aside from the pimples that you can clearly see there coming through shows more on the black that long before that takes place every time the ball um is it in the rubber the sponge, the cell structure of the sponge underneath is also breaking down long before you get to that stage. So I mean this this is these are worst case scenarios. I think I think I said in the other video that all we can do with these um, is we stick them on these little bats. Um, I think we've got them on there now. I think I might have even mentioned this in another video. Um, even with when your rubbers are so far gone even with this stuff you're not gonna i mean yeah it's a it's a 
bio rubber cleaner and rejuvenator it goes out every day it's really good stuff i mean you can i'll just put a couple one there one there one there i mean yes you're gonna actually be able to get the dirt off from in between you know by pushing we've just got a phone call so we'll be right back so as i was saying um there's no amount of this stuff i mean i'll do it just for the sake of doing it but you put a couple of drops on there you're not gonna you're not gonna rejuvenate this anytime soon i mean as good as the cleaner is and the rejuvenator um you can't rejuvenate something that's completely worn out so you might have taken the initial layer of dirt and grime off there um oh yeah it's just starting to dry out now but once that once your pimples start coming through i mean that's probably gone three times its lifespan but with it being so expensive um people tend to hang on to them longer um with your pimples then so any form of pimple out this is a not bad it actually came off my teammates bat actually um I know, I know exactly how long it's been on the bat. It's done about, it's done 12 months and it's had a lot of practice. But with your pimple, not so critical because you just want to find out whether you're going to actually play with pimples or you want to have a go with pimples. This is a short pimple, Warren. There's three different types in three different thicknesses. Um, <clears throat> in fact, what I'll probably do is do a review on the Warren because we've been asked for it. People get confused um, to the what it all means, the different types and different sponges or what have you. Yeah, I sort of picked away at the, the glue. Um, it's a very, very soft, easy, controllable rubber, this. They say it's about a 32, and I don't dispute that. I, I used it for years. I just use the faster version now. Um, so it's actually pulled a little bit of the sponge off because it's so porous. So things like Warren's, you know, anybody who spends a bit of money, I'll give them one of them just so they can try it. Um, and then here's another, another one actually. I think it lasted a couple of hours with a 755. You're not gonna go from reverse to a long pimple rubber. If you're used to going under the ball and chopping it, oh, it's just sitting up in the air and hitting it past me. If you've been doing something for years and years and years it, it, it's going to be very very difficult to go with a long pimple but these generally speaking somebody's fine with that to try it out even the sponge is in decent decent shape um so yeah it's, that's going to be absolutely fine for, for for people to test so it's a little bit of a short video um i could have done with some sort of rubbers in between but generally what i do with the old rubbers people say oh have you got any old rubbers and if they're like this if generally speaking if they, if it's german rubber and it's like that i just drop it in the bin i don't give it away for coaching but because it's energy people like these little bats made up 14 99 for a bat with energies on it's a little coaching bat it's a little fiddly thing um 120 by 120 so it's just a little bit of fun and if you practice with that for half an hour then go back to your normal bat you'll be seeing it like a football and you should be able to be playing a lot better but as i say a short video just about the longevity and how people hang on to the rubbers um <clears throat> little story people like the little stories one particular guy He'd had his bat over 35 years and you know he was very very difficult to play he was unplayable he had tackiness chop on one side and tackiness drive on the other only it wasn't if we go back to that original one his rubber was completely smooth completely dead it was very difficult to play you could block it back and you would just get it back all day long not bothered about the spin same bat same rubbers for 30 years in fact his finger had gone right through the sponge right through the top sheet in the sponge and then you could see a strip of wood where his finger goes so long story short um somebody complained about his bat he got a new one off us and i said to him well with the best wood in the world a new bat compared to something like that 
it's not really going to work out for you and a bit of a sad tale because he just packed it in so don't hang on to your equipment for too long get it changed when you when it most players of any note know when the performance is dipping and when the performance is dipping or you're not getting as much on your serves it's time to bite the bullet and change the rubbers some guys do it every three every three months the, the top players they want the rubbers fresh they want to feel that they're playing with the, the max get the maximum amount of spin some go two three four five years there's no right or wrong well the wrong is keeping a rubber five years because um yeah the, the, you're just not going to get the performance and on these these won't be more than a season or so old somebody who puts a lot of practice in um you know, as i say look at this, you catch it on the table on one of these and um, that's why we stick them on little bats there's another one a little bit of super glue up there so change your rubbers um if you need any advice we're only a phone call away Steve from Custom Table Tennis, hit the like and subscribe button. Until next time, and I think because we've been asked asked for it, we're going to do the um, we're going to do the Warrens. I'm just going to do them, and then and then the information's out there. Why is the three versions? So hit the like and subscribe. Bye for now.